Less than a week after my Zenful Z Shell video, the Power Level 10K project went into life support mode. I really hope that's a coincidence. The prompt will still work with Z Shell for the foreseeable future. However, the project will only receive very limited support, and for some people that might be an issue. Either way, I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a look at a couple of other prompts, in order to see if I could recreate the minimalism of Power Level 10K. A couple of the comments on my Z Shell video gave some good arguments as to why I should reconsider my opinion on Starship. So, as the open-minded individual that I am, I decided to give it a go, and installed it on my system. However, during the configuration, I realized it missed a key feature from Power Level 10K, the transient prompt. This feature is where the full prompt will only display on the current command. For any historical actions, the prompt is displayed in a much more condensed version. Personally, I find this feature helps to draw my eye to the current prompt, helping me to remain focused. Starship does actually have a transient prompt feature, but it's only available for Windows shells, weirdly enough, and fish. For fish, it works pretty well, but I'm not 100% comfortable making the change to a non-POSIX shell. Not just yet, anyway. Therefore, without a transient prompt on Z Shell, Starship was out of the picture, and my search continued. Fortunately, that search wasn't in vain, and I discovered another project that supported the transient prompt. Oh my posh. Which is yet another prompt for any shell, kinda like Starship. However, as well as supporting a transient prompt on Z Shell, it also supports a lot of themes, such as Pure, Tokyo Night, and even a few based on Power Level 10K. All of this suggests that Oh My Posh might just be a viable replacement for my Zenful prompt. Let's take a look and see if this is the case. First things first, we need to get Oh My Posh installed on our system. As I'm using Arch, by the way, I'll install it using Yay. Once it's installed, we then need to enable it for our shell by heading over to the .zshellrc. For me, I'm going to replace where I source the .p10k file with the following line to initialize Oh My Posh. Make sure to do the same for your own configuration with whichever prompt you may be using. I'm also going to remove any other references to Power Level 10K in my configuration. Additionally, if you're using macOS, the documentation recommends to add in the following line, which will prevent Oh My Posh running on the default terminal.app, which is unsupported. Once you've configured your Z shell correctly, you can open up another terminal window and look at the default theme. Not bad, but not exactly my cup of tea. There's just a little bit too much information for me to achieve a Zenful experience. Fortunately, it's rather simple to configure Oh My Posh to make it more minimal. Let's go ahead and do so by modifying the configuration. But uh, where does the configuration live? Well, OMP, as I'm now going to call it, does configuration just a little bit differently. Rather than having a single dedicated config file like other applications, by default, OMP makes use of an embedded one. In order to use a different configuration, we have to pass it in when we initialize the application inside of our Z Shell RC. Whilst this approach is different from other applications, it does provide some benefits in that you're able to easily swap configurations if you ever desire. To create our own configuration, let's begin by exporting the default one into its own file. To do so, first I'm going to create a .config slash OMP directory to store this configuration file in. Then we can export the default configuration using the following command. Now let's open up this file and take a look. Oh, yeah. By default, OMP exports as JSON, which is not exactly my favorite configuration format to work with. Instead, I prefer to use something such as YAML or even better, TOML. Fortunately for us, OMP actually supports all three of these formats, and we're able to choose which one we want to use by passing in the format flag to the export command. In my case, I want to export as TOML, so I'm going to pass the TOML argument to the format flag. Now our configuration is in a bit more of a friendly format. All that remains now is to set up Oh My Posh to use this new configuration file. We can do that by making the following change inside of our .zshellrc, passing in the config flag with the path to our configuration file. If we open up another terminal window, everything should look the same as it did before. But so now we're able to customize this theme however we want. In my case, I want it to be very similar to how it is with Power Level 10K, displaying both minimal information and having the same style of transient prompt. Fortunately, we can achieve this using Oh My Posh, which currently has a lot more information than I'm looking for. If we take a quick look at the config, we can see how the customization is laid out. Oh My Posh uses the concept of blocks, which contain a list of segments. In our configuration, we have two blocks, one for the left side of the prompt and one for the right. 
If we take a quick look at our prompt, we can actually see the segments. On the left side of the prompt, the first segment we can see is our user's name. The second one is the current directory that we're in, which also has a folder icon. The next visible segment is a white check mark, which represents the last command status. However, our prompt actually has more than these three segments. And if I navigate over to a Git repository, you'll see a hidden segment suddenly appear, showing some information about our current Git status. On the right hand side of the prompt, you'll see we have some further information letting us know the shell that we're in as well as the current time. If we take a look at our configuration, however, you'll see we also have a number of other segments on the right hand side. These are used to display any information about programming languages in the current directory that we're in. If I navigate over to my Dreams of Code project, you'll see icons for both Node.js and Golang. This is due to the directory having both a package.json and a go.mod. For some people, this level of information can be rather useful. However, in my case, I much prefer a more minimal experience. To achieve that, however, we need to modify the configuration. First things first, let's remove all of the block segments from both the left and right prompt. If I do this one by one, you can see these segments being removed from the prompt in real time. After that, go ahead and remove everything else from underneath our first block. Don't worry, we'll add some of this back in later, but we want to make sure we start with a clean slate. Once you're complete, your configuration should look pretty similar to mine. Nice and lean. If we open up a new terminal window to test our prompt, it will pretty much look empty. With that, we have a nice blank canvas. Let's begin making this look like Power Level 10K, with the first thing we're going to replicate being Power Level 10K's path display. In order to achieve this, we can use the path segment of Oh My Posh which has some pretty nice documentation showing us how we can use it. Let's go ahead and add this as our first block segment. To do so, head on over to your configuration and add in the following lines. First, defining the type, which is going to be path, followed by the style. In OMP, there are four different styles you can choose from for each segment. These consist of plain, which is just a foreground text with some background color, the powerline style, in which you can also customize the powerline symbol that's used, Diamond, which allows you to add symbols to both sides. And lastly, Accordion, which is the same as Powerline, except that it will display even when disabled, just without text. For me, as I like to keep it minimal, I like the simple, plain style. Next up, let's define the segment's colors. With Oh My Posh, you can set both the background color and the foreground color. For the background, I'm going to set this to be transparent. And for the foreground, I want this to be a shade of blue. However, before we set it, there's actually three different ways we can define colors in Oh My Posh. The first way is to just pass in the hex code of the color that we want, provided that your terminal emulator supports true color. The second approach is to use a color palette, which we can define as follows. Here I'm defining a color of green with the following hex value. We can then reference this color from our palette using the following syntax, prefixing the name of a color with a P followed by a colon. The color palette is useful if you want to make colors reusable in your configuration. The last approach to defining colors is to just use the ANSI color name which will then use the color defined by your terminal configuration. In my case, I want to use the color blue defined by my terminal emulator. So I'm going to set this value to be the ASCII blue, which is the same as my power level configuration. Next, we have another section called properties, which allows us to customize each segment depending on their own specific configuration. In the case of the path, we have a number of different options we can choose from. However, the only one I'm going to set is the style, of which there are 10 different flavors. In my case, I'm going to set this to be full, which will display the full path of the current working directory. With that, our path segment is now configured. Next up, I want to add in the right angled bracket. To do this is rather easy. All we need to do is add another segment into our block. For this segment, we're going to select the type of text, which is used to display, well, text. To define the text that is displayed, we set it in the template property, which in my case is going to be the right angle bracket Unicode character. Pretty simple. However, it's worth noting that the template property can actually be used in much more powerful ways. This is because Oh My Posh uses Go under the hood, and with it uses the powerful templating features of the language. If we check out the documentation, you'll see that there's a number of different properties we could actually use with this template field such as displaying the current folder name using the following template, or even using conditionals, such as displaying different prompts for different shells. 
Additionally, we're also able to access environment variables within this template. For example, if we're inside of a tmux session, we can add the word tmux to our prompt, and when we're not inside of one, it'll just display as normal. For the moment, I'm going to keep it simple. However, we will be using templates with some other sections later on in the video. With the text segment in place, you'll notice that there's an issue compared to my existing Power Level 10K configuration. Both of these segments are on the same line. For some people, that's okay. But for me, I want these to be across two lines instead. Fortunately, we can do this by adding in another block just for our text segment. However, inside of this block, we'll need to set the new line property to be true. If we go and test this out, you'll see that it's working as expected. However, there's another bit of a formatting issue. You'll notice that there's a space at the front of our path, preventing it from sitting flush with our text segment. To solve this, we could prefix our text segment with a space. But honestly, that's a waste of a good column character. Instead, a better way to solve this is to add a template to our path segment. If we set the template property to the following value, you'll see that both segments are now properly aligned. For any segment templates, you can find the supported properties inside of the Oh My Posh documentation, which is how I knew which property to set in this case. So far, our configuration is coming along nicely. Next, it's time to configure the entire reason we went with Oh My Posh the transient prompt. When it comes to oh my posh, this is pretty simple to set up. All we need to do is add in the following transient prompt section, defining both the background and foreground colors as well as the text template. In my case, I'm going for a minimal configuration. However, if you want to, you can use templates here to do some more dynamic things. Now, when we compare our transient prompt to power level 10K, they're starting to look really similar. However, there is one thing missing. In my Power Level 10K configuration, I have a new line between my transient and current prompts. If you'll remember, we already solved this issue once before by adding in a new line into our second block. Therefore, all we need to do is add the same property to our initial block. Now, the two prompts are starting to look indistinguishable from one another. That is, until I encounter an error. In Power Level 10K, you'll notice if the last command fails, we end up with a red prompt rather than magenta. However, we're missing that behavior in our new prompt. Fortunately, OMP has a feature that we can use to recreate this. This feature is Color Templates, which allows you to define a color using a template with access to various different properties, such as the last exit code. Therefore, to recreate this behavior, let's go ahead and add in a foreground template to our text segment. This template will check if the code property is greater than zero. If it is, that means the last command failed and will set the color to be red. Next, we'll add another foreground template, which will check if the code is equal to zero. In that case, we'll set it to be magenta. Now our prompt should be the correct color when the status code fails. However, we also need to apply this color template to our transient prompt as well. Now, if we test this behavior, our prompt is acting just like it would if it was power level 10K, which is on the left, just for reference. With the basic prompt properties now configured, the next thing to set up is our Git status. If we navigate to a Git repository in Power Level 10K, you can see that it displays some minimal information about Git on the prompt. This segment shows either the current branch name or the current commit if you're in a detached state, an asterisk for any staged or working changes, and down or up arrows if your local repository is behind or ahead of your remote, respectively. OMP has a Git segment which we can use to replicate this information. In fact, you can actually configure this to do a lot more. However, again, I want to make sure I recreate the power level 10k status. In your own case, you may want to check out which properties are available. To begin, let's go ahead and add in the git segment into our first block. When we get to our text template, let's first add in the head property. If we take a peek at the head property, however, you'll notice it also comes with a branch icon. We can fortunately disable it by setting the branch icon property to be empty, which is a lot more minimal, in my opinion. Next up, let's add in the asterisk indicator that will appear if we have any working or staged changes. We can perform this by adding an if or conditional based on the dot working dot changed or dot staging dot changed. In order for this to work, we also need to set the fetch status property to be true. If we check the prompt, we can see this asterisk appears for both staged changes and unstaged changes as well. The next thing to add is the down and up arrows. Because these arrows can appear at the same time, we need to add a check-in for each one. Let's add in our down arrow first, which will appear if our local repository is behind our remote. We can do this by checking if the value of behind is greater than zero. If we check out our prompts, we can see that this is working correctly. However, we have a slight difference compared to power level 10K, the color. 
Fortunately, this is easy to resolve, as we're able to add XML tags for color inside of our text templates. Here, we're wrapping our arrow in an XML color tag of cyan. Now, if we check our prompt, you can see that it's colored correctly. Next, let's add in the up arrow by checking if the ahead value is greater than zero. Let's also make sure this sits inside of the cyan tag. With that, we're almost complete with our git segment. There's just one last thing to change. If we enter into a detached head, you'll see that by default, we have kind of a strange icon. PowerLevel10k uses the at symbol. So let's go ahead and modify the following property in order to keep parity. With that, our git segment is now complete, with the only difference being some additional text when we're in a detached state. Personally, I'm okay with this slight difference. However, if it does bother me in the future, I can always just fork the project. With that, we have one last segment to add in order to obtain parity with power level 10k. And that is the execution time that appears on the right hand side for any long running commands. Again, OMP provides another segment we can use called execution time. However, in order for this segment to appear on the right hand side of our prompts, we need to set up another block. Let's add this above our second block, which contains our text segment. For the type, rather than setting this to be prompt, go ahead and set this to be our prompt, which is a special position for a number of different shells to show information on the right hand side. Additionally, we also want to set the overflow property to be hidden, which means that if there's not enough space for this block to display, then OMP will just hide it. Then we can add in our execution time segment, setting the style to plain, the background to transparent, and the foreground to yellow. I'm also going to set the template as follows to keep it rather minimal. Next up, we have a number of properties we can set. The first of which is the threshold. This is the number of milliseconds a command needs to take in order for the execution time to appear. By default, OMP sets this to 500 milliseconds. Power level 10K on the other hand sets this to be 5 seconds. So in order to keep parity with P10K, I need to set this to be 5000 milliseconds. Next up, we have our display style. We can see the different options we can select on the documentation, as well as a table of how they format different values. By default, this is set to Austin, which is pretty similar to Power Level 10K, with the slight difference being that Power Level 10K doesn't show any fractional seconds. Unfortunately, there isn't an option that matches Power Level 10K's default configuration, but I'm happy with this slight change anyway. If we wanted to, however, we could easily recreate the Power Level 10K formatting using the segments template. With that, we've successfully managed to recreate the Power Level 10K prompt in OMP. We're not fully finished yet, however, as OMP provides a couple of other features that aren't available on Power Level 10K. Let's take a look at each of these and see if they're worth implementing. The first of these features is tooltips that enable you to have transient segments that appear on the right hand side of the prompt whenever you type out the associated command. For example, here I've set up a tooltip to show any git information whenever I type out the git command. You can do some really interesting things when it comes to tooltips. However, for myself, I think it just might be a little too distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them. The second feature is known as the secondary prompt, which is used to customize the prompt when it spans across multiple lines. By default, this works the same way as power level 10K. However, I do want to customize this to be just a little bit more Zen. To do so, first add in the following section into your Tommel configuration. Here I'm going to set the foreground color to be magenta and the background color to be transparent. Now comes the fun part, setting in our text template yet again. In this case, I'm going to keep the same right angle bracket. However, this time I'm going to put two of them. That way it differentiates from the standard prompt, but also gives me a little bit of indentation. Now, if we go and check this out, we can see this is working as expected. All that remains is to do a tiny bit of refactoring. Because we have a custom color for our git status, it's going to be worthwhile to define a custom palette color. That way we can easily reuse or change this color if we ever need to. That wraps up the Zen Oh My Posh theme, which is based on power level 10K. If you want to use this theme for yourself, you can find a link to the GitHub repo in the description down below. However, for some of you, this may not be your taste. Fortunately, OMP provides a number of different themes on their website that you can check out and use. To do so, all you need to do is download the theme into your config directory and then modify your OMP initialization to make use of it. For example, here is the Tokyo Night theme, or perhaps you prefer Capuchin, which is also pretty nice, but unfortunately me and Capuchin have gone our separate ways. Overall, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with Oh My Posh. That is, until I finally decide I want to try fish, and maybe then Starship as well.